Because yeah. uh, we couldn't publish it properly. Right. A little bit of a two-part question as well. Um, no is there any books that you have regretted publishing? And is there any Never. books you Never. have <laughs> regretted <laughs> not getting? All of our books have been done exactly as we thought. <laughs> <laughs> and we love all our children equally. All those yeah. stories will be told in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> Was there a second part? <laughs> the, was, was there any book that you turned down that went on perhaps oh, yeah. for another? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 We can all tell stories about A lot of books we didn't bid high enough. Um, recently, a lot of books we didn't bid high Recently, she uh, bid on Stephanie Meyer. Almost had Stephanie Meyer. Yeah. Yeah, Tom, Tom uh, wouldn't let me host. bid. We Tom wouldn't let me it. bid past $25,000 for the first Robin Hood novel. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Every editor has one of those. Of he wouldn't let me buy Red Mars. <laughs> <laughs> there were times when we had more money and times when we didn't. <laughs> we've all, and we've all blown it. Everybody's, yep. we've, all, we've all simply not realized the commercial potential of something and somebody else came along and Absolutely. did. Absolutely. You know, this is true of everybody who works in publishing for any length of time. You know, you're, you want you want your, your your good calls to outweigh your bad calls, but you got to make bad calls. Oh, you know? Totally. Every 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 brilliant publisher and editor has get to tell stories. They, you were telling me about missing Ray Feist Magician. Yeah. You know, um, what was the story? Oh, uh, Garfield. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, no, you have you had your hand up, and he is, yes, actually you. Uh, did you have the opposite problem? You had a, a well-known writer, not known for writing science fiction, wanting to write, do a science fiction uh, one for you through tour. You know, okay. something like uh, Last Hero. Yeah, we do that. Well, the, the, uh, David had uh, the fellow who writes the Bourne books. The, oh, right. Oh. right. Yeah. Well, uh, the guy that continued it, Eric Van Lusbader, Lusbader. wrote Ninja, and then oh. he's written the last uh, six Bourne books. The, the last three movies were made from his books. Mm -hmm. And he very heavily identified with the thriller, and although he, he came started. to tour to write uh, fantasy. Yeah, although Eric started as a, a fantasy writer, yeah. originally. He, his big success his was... His big success uh, was later, was yeah. with thrillers. Was, but, with thrillers, with yeah. Ninja. Yeah. But he was published at Burke Fantasy yeah. at Berkeley. Yeah, it, 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 being known as a science fiction and fantasy publisher is a, you know, a, a, a blessing and a curse, which is why we, you know, Tom wound up starting the whole Ford imprint as a, a different side of the company. Um, there is no you know, department of Torah and department of Forge. It's just a bunch of editors who buy books in different mixes, and we decide what imprints to put them on when we buy them. Right. But uh, um, yeah, there was a point there where we were really branching out into other genres. We, 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 we've never been at all science fiction and fantasy houses. Even at yeah, the very even beginning, the beginning, Tor published westerns and thrillers <laughs> and, and mysteries cartoons and, and, and so forth. And so the, 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 the theory but, was yeah. to set novels in history, past, present, and future. It seems to me that the past uh, prehistory is clearly science fiction. We have, for example, a husband and wife, archaeologist, anthropologist team, Michael and Kathy Gear, who set their books in prehistory. And they extrapolate from the best archaeological knowledge backward and tell the story of how perhaps the first people came to the basin of the Great Lakes, you know, and the story of their civilization. If you continue this kind of thing, eventually you move into history. And naturally, editors who are doing one kind of thing will, will do related things. And things move from the far archaeological past up into first contact. And first contact is a natural for science fiction editors who we often think of it as, as contact between human and alien, but it could also be industrial European and Stone Age North America, right. which leads you into the westerns. On the other end, we were doing near future thrillers that were, we thought of as science fiction. They were set 10, 15 years in the future. We found Tom Clancy putting action on a satellite in a book like Cardinal of the Kremlin. Right and calling it uh, techno thriller, and it was sold a lot better. <coughs> so we took Dean Ng, who was doing yeah. near future science fiction for us, and we called his next book a techno thriller, and it made the New York Times list. Right. And our first time bestseller. Our it was our first time bestseller, yeah. 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 So it was the same book. We redesignated it, and, and it changed proved the, the right a little, but changed not the much. packaging just a little. Just and, a little. But it was the right marketing thing to do to maximize yeah. His reach to his public. 
There got to be a point, though, where we were publishing, um, I think the, the book that was really the occasion for this rethink was uh, The Swiss Account by Paul Erdman, who was known for financial thrillers. He wrote The Crash of 79. Um, and we, we went out as a Torah hardcover and wound up getting, uh, I think we, we discovered we simply wound up getting given by a lot of uh, metropolitan newspapers to the science fiction reviewer because it was a Torah book. And I think this is where the uh, thinking right. that you need an imprint that, that, that isn't associated with SF and fantasy right. um, came, came along. Yeah, his two yeah. Pre previous books have received an awful lot of attention. He was a San Francisco author and the examiner really loved him and always gave him huge <coughs> coverage. And they skipped this book, and it was a very similar book to books that had he had done the last two books where they had given him huge coverage. Right. And we called up and we said, look, we, we don't, mm -hmm. you know, uh, mean to imply we, we should be questioning what you review, but we were surprised. Why was it you decided, uh, you know, Paul has asked us to ask you, why uh, did you decide to just skip this new Paul Erdman? Yeah. And they said, oh, we wouldn't skip a new Paul Erdman. He said, well, you did. Well, you did. <laughs> and they said, we'll get back to you. And they got back to us, and they said, oh, we sent it to the science fiction reviewer. And he said, this isn't for me. And he put it aside. <laughs> but Great. when we saw Tor on it, we knew it must be science fiction. So this is why we started the Forge imprint. Right. This was the final straw. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so did they end up reviewing it? Well, it was a little oh, late by then. <laughs> Yeah. So when you have a company of very passionate people, I'm, I'm sitting here wondering, is there a legend of sort of the, the one great battle that stands in your memory above all the other internal great battles of yelling and <laughs> screaming and over time to get to a conclusion on some particular issue or other? Yes, and I'll never tell you. I will never. <laughs>